Hello everyone, welcome to Big Orange Biology. I am Mr. Jennings, and today we're gonna to be talking about lipids. Now, lipids are hydrocarbons composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms that are insoluble in water. That's because the bonds between carbon and hydrogen are extremely nonpolar. Most hydrocarbons in general are nonpolar compounds. Great examples of hydrocarbons besides lipids be things like plastics, which are derived from oils. When close together, these lipids are weak, but have an additive property known as van der Waals interactions that hold them together. That's due to the uneven distribution of electrons on those atoms. So it's a force that when you put it into play here, so say you got yourself some lipids, got ourselves some phospholipids here, the van der Waals force is going to kind of keep these lipids together. And that plays a very key role in lipid structure. Now, lipids themselves, primary function is to store energy, specifically in the bonds between the two, between carbon and the carbon hydrogen bonds. Now, lipids can also play a very big structural role in cell membranes. These are our phospholipids, as I mentioned a second ago, and they can also provide structural overall adaptation support as in the form of fat in animal bodies for thermal insulation. Now, the chemical storage property, most of us are familiar with lipids being as a primary energy storage molecule. That's what is taught generally in general biology, but in real world AP, we need to understand that does play a very vital role for cell membranes in addition to its energy functions. Now, your typical energy-based lipids are known as your triglycerides. These are the lipids that you probably think about when you hear the word lipid. These are commonly are the fats and oils. Triglycerides are very, very little polarity. There is a little bit of a polar region at the top, but not a strong one, but they're in general, they are extremely hydrophobic. So if I put a triglyceride into a aqueous solution, a water-based solution, it will separate as fast as it can from water and any other polar molecules that might be present. Now triglycerides are made of, structurally speaking, three fatty acids. Now, fatty acids are nonpolar hydrocarbons that have a carboxylic, carboxylic acid group on the end. That kind of gives it the slight polar region. That's the big thing here. The carboxyl group is a polar group. So, slightly polar region at the top. But in general, the fatty acids are nonpolar. As we see here, you have glycerol, which is an alcohol, a very common alcohol, and the three fatty acids. And the OHs and Hs will basically split off to make water. Now, structurally speaking, fatty acids can vary in length and structure. The longer they are, typically speaking, the more energy they have. Now, saturated fatty acids, structurally speaking, have the most hydrogens attached to them, hence the word saturated. They are full of hydrogen. Because they're full of hydrogen, they are very rigid, using the term there, to describe a molecule. Basically, they cannot bend. If every one of these little dashes here off the C was to represent a hydrogen, there's not a lot of room for carbon to bend. Now, unsaturated fatty acids are hydrocarbons that have a double bond or here and there. So when you have a double bond on a carbon, because carbon can only bond four times, covalently speaking, that means, that, for instance, this carbon here can only bond two times in addition to its double bond. And this carbon can only bond one time in addition to its double bond, and it's linked to the other carbon. This creates a situation where there's less resistance and space being take up by hydrogen. While hydrogen is a very small atom, it does take up room, and without the hydrogen there, that allows this molecule to form kinks and be easily packed together tightly. Now, unsaturated fatty acids are loose. They actually have very low melting points because it doesn't take much energy to get them moving some more. And as such, they're typically your liquids. Here's a great example of what we're talking about, though. Look, in the space filling model, the hydrogens are on every single carbon. There is literally no room for this thing to move. If it was ingested, it will stay in this rigid form pretty much the entirety of its time until it's digested properly. Meanwhile, compare it to linoic acid here. Linoic acid has these double bonds located. Because of those double bonds, there's less hydrogen in the space filling model. Meaning this thing can take possibilities of different forms because the double bond allows the carbons to kind of get some folding going. So it can fold in multiple directions and creates this distinct L shape versus the linear line shape. That's all because of the lack of hydrogen right there in the middle. 
hydrogen's not taking up space, there's no electron repulsion going on, it's allowed it to flow a little bit better. Now fatty acids in general, amphipathic, as I mentioned before, has a slightly hydrophobic and a hydrophilic in. Now, phospholipids take advantage of this amphipathic method and take it to another level. Because phospholipids, instead of being three fatty acids, are two, with a phosphate group taking the place of the third fatty acid when it binds to the glycerol. Now the phosphate group, because it is a negative charge, it makes that part of the molecule even more hydrophilic. So it, pretty, it takes what was already there and makes it more pronounced. So the phosphate's over here. Phosphate's got a slightly negative charge. It's a polyatomic ion, a very common polyatomic ion. And this is what we usually represent with a solid head with two tails. This is your traditional phospholipid. This molecule here plays a key role in cell biology. This molecule is the literal boundary for your cell. Without this molecule, certain molecules could travel through the cell membrane, and that would cause a lot of difficulties for homeostasis. When you put phospholipids in a water environment, it will form a bilayer naturally. Nonpolar hydrophobic tails will point inwards and the hydrophilic heads will face outwards. And because of this, all biological membranes, as far as we know, are phospholipid bilayers. They may have different varieties of phospholipids with different functional groups and such attached. But in general, the basic structure is still there. It is what we call a highly conserved trait. In biology, if we tell you, say something's highly conserved, it means it's evolutionary beneficial to be like that. So on the outside here, you have a polar region. On the outside and the inside, but in the middle, you have a big old non-polar region. What that's going to do is it takes, makes it going to be very difficult for polar molecules to pass through. And it's really going to be more of something we're going to explore in the future in the next couple units. But however, you need to be aware that phospholipid bilayers are much more complicated than what we're seeing here in this picture. This is a simplistic rendering of the phospholipid bilayer. In conclusion, lipids are more than just energy storage molecules. They are more than just fats and oils. A good number of lipids form the lipids in your cell membranes. Without, you would have trouble, difficult, you would have difficulty functioning. So at the end of the day, lipids are just these big long chains of hydrocarbons which don't interact with water, but because that lack of interaction with water makes it a strong contender for a structural molecule that is necessary to deal with the harsh harshness that is water. It is universal solvency. Now, that will conclude today's video. Next time, we will be talking about proteins and polypeptides in general. Alright, thank you for watching. This has been Big Orange Biology. Have a great day.